All right. So I just watched Nico Montano's promo that um, the UFC cut for her called Fighting Spirit. You know, I just watched the whole thing and it was really good. It actually was really good. Nico Montano is such a shame about Nico. It is really a shame about Nico. She really did the unthinkable going in there. She beat up in a tough as the underdog. She beat up a couple of veterans. She she just she really could. She really made a fan out of a lot of people on the show. I'll tell you that she made a fan out of a lot of people on the show. And then for the finale, you know, she's going up against Roxanne Mataferi. Luck was on her side. A little bit of luck was on her side because uh, they pulled Sajara. She couldn't continue to make weight. And I'm just going to say she did not make weight. You know, every time I say she didn't make weight, people are like, oh, but no, she was pulled for medical reasons. And I, I don't care about that. She didn't make weight. You know, Sajara did not make weight. So Nico fought Roxanne Mataferi and it was a good fight. Not the most technical fight in the world, you know, but it was a good fight. It was so good that it was fight of the night. Think about this last tough that we watched. This last tough was horrible. So, and nobody was even talking about it. That Nico, Roxanne Mataferi fight put both Nico and, you know, it put Nico on the map and it put Roxanne Mataferi back on the map for a little while because even Roxanne looked better than ever. You know, even Roxanne kind of came back with a little Roxanne 2.0, 2.0, you know. So I will say Nico really made a whole lot of fans. But the thing is, like, down the line, it's just we all knew that there was a bullet with her name on it. You know, we all knew that. And she started to know it, too. She started to figure it out and she started to say, whoa, 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 whoa. I just got here. I'm just getting a taste of this limelight. I'm just getting it. I literally just got here after all the work I did. Now I got to fight Valentina. Who came out the womb, probably came kicking out the womb. So it's just kind of I do think it's a bad situation for um, Nico. But they did cut this promo for her and win, lose, or draw. I actually think that Nico is going to be a big star for the UFC. I really do. I really do. They 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 sold me. They like they sold Nico to me. The whole story about the girl, even the ducking, even the ducking, because her ducking actually made her name continue to be relevant. Her name stayed in people's mouths a lot longer. Now, I'm not going to say people need to go out there ducking fights. Please don't do that. This is a this is a very special type of situation. You know, this is a very special type of situation. So don't go out there ducking fights. But I will say that Nico ducking this fight the way that she did it and then the way that she lashed out at Ariel Hawani, called that man rat balls. And just she was. There was something about her where it was like, you know, you guys are seeing me as a person that I'm not. I'm actually really injured. You know, none of us believed that she was injured. Me, myself, too. I didn't believe that she was injured. I thought to myself, man, I think that she's just ducking this fight because Nico is just such a killer. You know, Nico, who's a flyweight and went up there and beat both, most of the bantamweights. I think she saw that and was just kind of like, <sighs> I thought she was a little scared. I did. I thought she was a little scared and I thought she thought she wasn't ready. I still think that, you know, I still think that. But I will say this. Win, lose or draw. Now, if it's a win or a draw, Nico's name is Nico. They're they're going to make Nico a star. They're going to do it. If Nico loses, as long as she doesn't get knocked out and as long as she doesn't get, you know, submitted first round type of situation, just, you know, just steamrolled, basically, then I think that her name might be on the map. I actually do. I actually do. I think they're going to make try to make a star out of her. I thought that the promo was just so good. She she didn't even kick. She did not throw one kick. She did not throw one punch. Her, her friends, everybody who was there, her training partners, they all said fighting spirit like 50 or 60 times in a three minute clip. Literally every every other second they were saying fighting spirit. That was it. You know, she was doing some yoga. She had um put a couple of modelos in the cooler. So I guess she's got that sponsorship and I don't think she's losing it. I actually do not think that she's losing that sponsorship when she loses the belt. 
I think she's going to keep it. This Navajo young girl with this, the fighting, apparently it's going to be the fighting spirit brand is going to be her brand. Um, you know, coming out of a, a matriarch, just everything about her is a little bit unique. She's, and I will say Nico Montano is very pretty. You know, she is very nice looking, but she carries herself so with so much respect. Like she wears regular clothes that just regular girls wear when they go to the beach. Shorts and, you know, shorts and a tank top. It's basically what you wear when you go to the beach. You buy have on your bikini underneath. When you get in the water, okay, cool. We're all, we, we strip down into our birthday suits. If you're going for the skinny dip for all my Europeans out there, you strip down to your birthday suit to all my Americans out there. You strip down to your bikini and you jump in. But nobody's, you know, it's a certain type of person who takes all these butt naked pictures and then posting them. And just it's there's something about that type of person. And Nico was showing herself to have a lot of self-respect, a lot of self-respect. And I, I actually like the promo clip. They had her playing the guitar. It, they're selling Nico Montano in the video clip. It's got about 50,000 views on it. It's got about 50,000 views. And I thought to myself, dang, people are checking for Nico like that. So I had to watch it and it was really good. It was good. They're going to sell Nico based on her fighting spirit. She is the new M Misha Tate. That is who Nico Montano is. She is the new upgraded, a little bit hippie, a little bit hipster version of Misha Cupcake Tate, right? No, everybody knew Misha Tate had heart. She went in there and got her arms snapped all over the sake, you know, just in the name of heart. So I think that, I think this is going to be somebody they're going to push. I know right now it looks pretty dark. It's looking bleak for Nico because we already know what's going to happen. We know what's going to happen, but they're pushing Nico more than they're pushing Valentina. They're actually pushing Nico more than Valentina. There's something to be said about that. There is something to be said about that. I think we're looking at a new, I think that we are looking at a future celebrity, a future uh, MMA star. I, I really do. I really do. In and in a way, I kind of hope that it is her. I kind of hope that it is because, you know, she did go through that dark moment where she was ducking fights. But now it's like after she loses, we can see her climb back up the ladder. All of these undefeated fighters, as soon as they lose a fight, they're, they're, they're literally running away from the fight game. Ronda Rousey did it, right? Um, Conor McGregor did it. Conor McGregor said, thanks for the cheese. That was his first reaction. Thanks for the cheese. And then he was ready to be out of there. It's just, you know, Conor does have heart too. Don't get me wrong. He said, no, 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 that's not happening. Let's run it back. Exact same circumstances. And I'm going to beat this guy by running away from him and kicking him in the leg. I'm going to beat him by kicking him in the leg and running. I don't give a damn. So anyways, well, that, that's all I'll say about Nico Montano. I actually do think that she's going to lose this fight. I do think that she's going to lose this fight just because if Valentina brings that heat, that aggressive, you know, heat that we've seen in other fights, not necessarily in Bantamweight, but in her other fights, then Nico's in, in a world of trouble. She's in a world of trouble. But right now, the odds are stacked so heavy against her that she doesn't have to do much to win us over. A couple, if she just lasts a couple of rounds, if she just continues to be who she is, because her interviews are actually really good. She's charismatic. She's, she's funny. She jokes around, you know. Then she's got a little spice to her. She gave Ariel Helwani that heat, and Ariel is the perfect person to give a little heat to because he's going to hold on to that. The next time Ariel Hawani talks to Nico Montano, he's going to be like, remember, oh, I'm, I'm glad you're finally, uh, I'm glad you're finally not upset with me anymore. I'm glad you cooled off. I'm glad. He's going to keep the beef. He's going to keep it going. Ariel is the best person to, to kind of dog out a little bit because he'll bring it back up. He likes a story just as much as you need a story, right? He, he likes a story just as much as you need a story as an MMA fighter. And Nico poked that bear. And now she's, you know what I mean? Like she's going to get, continue to put it this way. The Nico Montano name is going to keep ringing. I believe so. Even after this KO submission, absolute ass whooping that she's about to take. 
But anyways, that's that's my thoughts on the um, clip. This is a strange video to do. It's literally just my reaction on a Nico Montano UFC promo clip. But if you guys saw the clip too, go ahead and let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button.